guys, we're really excited for today's episode because it was a request by one of our great patrons. The request was that we continue on with our author's video, and this time we've decided to make it better by bringing proof that they are the <laughs> receiving accents that we say they are by bringing in their micro-expressions via eye movements. Yeah, so we just wanted to comment on how the different perceiving axes will um, affect your writing, but then also we decided to have our own excerpts that we wrote like years ago without knowing that it will be used in this video. Uh, so yeah, we're going to comment on our writing styles as well. Interestingly, just like as we were doing research for this video, like all my favorite authors were like S-E-N-I and like all our favorite authors are like S-I-N-E. Yeah, and even like our approach, like Alex was just saying that she is mostly commenting on the mm. plot and I'm mostly commenting on the writing style, which we think is also like an N-I versus S-I difference. Mm -hmm. Well, first off, I'll say one author that we typed uh, on the S-E-N-I axis is Margaret Atwood, so I guess we'll show you some of her eye movements now. <laughs> um, I feel like the S-E-N-I authors have meaning in the overall plot. They kind of take you through these S-E events, and then collectively through these S-E events, you kind of begin to pick up the meaning. I think usually they kind of take you through events in real time too, like obviously all authors will do that to some degree, but yeah. I think with the S, I, and E axis there will be moments where they're just kind of conveying these like timeless S, I associations to you. But yeah, like just based on the first paragraph I read from this excerpt that will show on the screen, it's like, look at how many adjectives she uses and like how many physical descriptions. Oh, and sense, sense descriptions. Mm -hmm. Like I don't even have the excerpt in front of me right now, but I just remember like the scent of sweat or something and like these gym wall rope thingies hanging. Is that, is that what yeah, the first yeah, paragraph is? Yeah, I actually have it here. Yeah, like I just remember like there's sense of smell, there's sense of sight, there's sense of touch, like all encompassed in this very descriptive, adjective-heavy atmosphere. Yeah. Um, that's usually not how it is with S.I.E. writing. Usually, like, the mood or the vibe or maybe some sort of metaphor is explained through these S.E. kind of sensory things. There was old sex in the room and loneliness and expectation of something without a shape or name. That's the without a shape or name. So in ice, <laughs> that is so like, incredible. Yeah, and just, I looked over your shoulder, it was like the varnish wood with like circle patterns painted on, and it's just so specific. Like as an SI user, I sometimes have trouble like just latching on to all these SE sense data mm. that they put out, because for me, each data has an association by SI and E, so I'm constantly like sprouting to other points in my mind, and not... I guess getting the NI big picture, um, which is why I believe later on when we go to the SI people, you see that I would say their writing is much more economical with their words. Right. Yeah. yeah, they usually have a paragraph and they convey like one meaning in like the first half of the sentence and then a different meaning in the second half of the sentence and they move on to all these meanings that you kind of glean with every like SI association. Whereas yeah. SE, it's like they're building this whole environment, you're supposed to take in all these pieces. Mm -hmm. and together form this kind of like NI undercurrent or theme that they're trying to like portray. Yeah, with all the SE people that you gave, um, I immediately had a mental image that was very directed with all of their excerpts. Right. It's just like, okay, this is a mental image you want me to have, and there I have it. <laughs> but for the um, SI and E, it's much more like uh, the sentences are just so adjectiveless, <laughs> and sometimes they're just so direct like uh, maybe someone saying like I love you but there's not there's nothing else there's no how does a person A look like how does person B look mm -hmm. like it's just all up to you to go through your own memories of the past and your own associations with the word love and all that to build your own mental picture I guess I feel like with SI writing it's like usually the meaning is given to you more precisely or more direct oh yeah I, yeah I agree with that yeah a lot of times with NI writing you get all these kind of surreal moments. There can be surrealism in SI writing, but it's more concrete. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a little hard to describe, but everything that happens is, like, very physical and concrete. But then for NI, it could be, like, even with your writing, it could be a little more like, okay, that's a mental image that's totally not in this real world. Like, you're writing right. about the dark tentacles and, like, oozing. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's like, I don't have the, th I don't have the thing, but, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, oozing, like, dark energy. I was like, okay, dark energy, what am I supposed to get from that? What is... Right. 
an uh, interesting thing to comment on is like the unit of perception, I guess. It's like, mm -hmm. I think for SI people, the unit is kind of smaller. So it's like if you're describing objects in a room, like that chair, that chair is supposed to symbolize something else in the book. Right. So like that's already its own thing. But then for the NI, the NI unit would probably be more the room or like not even the room, but like all the physical things that are happening right now and how it builds up to one NI idea. Right. That's the one unit. But the, for SI, it's like each object has its own like meaning you did. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very like selective with our words and descriptions, whereas for you know, SE, it's like describe the whole thing. Yeah, like even with SE, I feel like even a succession of events could be like the unit. Yeah, exactly. Like, this event, that event, that event, and they, they all together have this like NI meaning. And interesting, I think with the surrealism, this probably even goes back to our dream video, but like in SE and I writing, the surrealism is like more in the reality itself that they're painting, mm -hmm. whereas the S I N E surrealism might just be that they associate kind of odd things with one another in order to convey some sort of kind of unique meaning that you might not experience oh, yeah, 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 in reality, yeah. right? Oh, that's <laughs> evident in our writing yeah. answers yeah. for sure. Okay, right, so I was thinking about like the use of similes and how you were saying the surrealism is more physical mm -hmm. than the SI surrealism. So one pattern that I kind of noticed was that like for an eye when you use similes, usually it's like, for example, they'll say her smile is ripening like a watermelon. I don't know, I just made that up. <laughs> so you use the word like, right? So this is like that. Um, but then for SI, they would say something like, I like her watermelon smile. Like there is no like, the thing is just that thing already by association. Um, there's no need for a word linkage. But sometimes they don't even say the smile. They just say watermelon. Like, for example, it's like, I want to kiss the watermelon of her face or something like that. <laughs> you know, like on her face. I don't know, like something... Like, they don't even mention that it's a smile. You just, you're supposed to just know. Right. So that was kind of, like, a cool difference that I saw. Okay, so, right, moving on to any SI. I, I believe, like, Naloka, his eye movements are super smooth. So I think he's, like, you know, either any SI or SI. Any. This Lolita excerpt, which I, once again, don't have in front of me. But the part where he goes, like, the mouse taking a trip down the palette to tap three times. Right, yeah, yeah. It's just... It's so weird. It's so weirdly physical and linguistic at the same time. You know, the Lolita. I, what I do, I'm like, oh yeah, it is going from the yeah. roof of my mouth to my teeth. Another one I remember from the excerpt, she was like, you know, Lolita in this thing and Lo in oh, that yeah, thing. Yeah. And then like Dolores on the dotted line. And I'm like... Yeah, but yeah, and I was like, oh, the dotted oh. line is the when you write your name yes. on a test. Right, yeah, so it's like such economy of words, right? He doesn't say like... Her serious name is Dolores. It's like Dolores on the dotted line. Well, it kind of it just took me a few seconds. Right. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, Dolores on the dotted line. It doesn't Im immediately conjure what that could specifically be. You kind of have to like make that like, okay, association with like a name and like dotted line. And then you're like, oh, okay. It's like signatures. And then that means it's like her real name. So it's like this whole link of like meaning, meaning, meaning. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, I just, sorry. I just remember that the part where this part even took me like so many <laughs> It's like he, she was the age of like she, her age that summer was like my age two summers ago before she was born. Anyway, he was basically saying he's three times as old as her. Mm. Yeah. I just remember that within that paragraph, he conveyed so much information. Yes, yeah, so like much. Yeah. In SE and I paragraph, they might just convey information about the room they're in and how that mimics the atmosphere they want the person to feel right and it all comes down to one point but within this paragraph it's like every sentence conveys new meaning new meaning so new much meaning. yeah i just want to say like she was low she was plain low standing at four foot ten in socks or in one sock or something <laughs> and it's like okay if maybe an se person would describe her casual dress like just she was wearing chips nail polish and one sock and like her hair was messy all of these things let's move on to neil stevenson who will show you here he has that kind of staccato SE, and I think there's even moments of him doing NI toggles, and we'll show that as well. His um, whole like book is very, very rich in like detail narratives, and it's also like very much in real time. Like you won't get that kind of like low in this thing and Dolores mm -hmm. and that, which is all kind of just like this descriptions of her that are timeless, right? It's not like sure, yeah. she's alternating between these states, like, right in front of Oh my gosh, I wouldn't even think of that. It's just natural to me. It's just yeah. so natural. Wow, okay. But with Stevenson, yeah, I don't think you get any of those kind of descriptions. It's just like you follow the characters through their life in real time, and that's a very, like, SE, I think, style of writing. 
And why I love his books so much, and especially Snow Crash, which maybe I should say spoiler alert if you, you know, haven't read it and no. want to read it. <laughs> I think, like, Snow Crash, it all boils down to this NI idea that language is a virus and that it's like language kind of is transmitted from person to person and you kind of learn it and it's like this programming in your brain that can then kind of like override you potentially. Okay, so for some reason this actually reminds me of a movie called Arrival, which I'm in the vast minority, but I didn't really like it, but I feel like you would like it. Well, which one is that? Is that with Amy Adams? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> so for the um, Neil Stevenson idea, which I have not read, but I just imagine if an SI user was to have this idea, they would probably convey this language as a virus idea throughout the language that they used to write, mm. which I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> right. if it was happening in there because I, I didn't read it, but I can't think of how you would do it off the top of my head, but yeah, they, yeah. I, would, I would think the form would be a part of like the concept. Right. right. SI does kind of use language itself, I think. Oh, yeah. The structure oh, of language to kind of convey meaning, where I think with SE, it's more just like trying to build visuals in your head to convey meaning. Mm. Generally, maybe. So this is the author of The Piano Teacher for another SI. Any example? Um, we'll put her name on the screen as we show you her smooth um, kind of SI drifting irises. Uh, I guess we can move on to the, the Piano Teacher, which is like one of my favorite books and movies where she says she was trying to escape her mother. Like something like so short and stark, no adjectives, nothing, just nouns and verbs. But I immediately have this like mental image in my head. So with SE writing, a lot of times I'm trying to build a mental image, but they keep adding more and more and more. I'm like, oh my god, and each thing that they add has a personal association meaning to me in my own memory. Think. So I gotta pull that up, and then now it seems like this room is filled with like 20 different symbolisms which are not supposed to be there, and my mind is just like not keeping up. So then a lot of times I zone out during the SE writing, I have to like read it again. That's so interesting. Yeah, I want to talk about my experience with SI reading. It's like so in your head, it's like you're holding on to like too many meanings that like right, yeah. don't really relate to one another. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I feel like with when I'm trying to like read SI heavy writing, and then it's like one sentence after another, it's like this meaning, this meaning, this meaning, and I just like I feel like I read the paragraph and I get like nothing because I think I'm expecting to get this like overall general meaning from a paragraph, mm -hmm. right? And I read oh the my paragraph gosh, yeah, and I'm like, so there is no overall general meaning. I have to just go like <laughs> sentence by sentence and figure out each specific association and that takes so much mental energy for me. Oh wow, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh right, so the thing I wanted to talk about the piano teacher was at the end of the paragraph, there's like a sentence where it's like, why did you buy that dress? Like, what are you doing with your life? Um, It's supposed to be her mom's thoughts or her mom yelling at her, but there are no quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Actually, our high school English teacher was like obsessed with this appropriated narration business where um, instead of doing quotes, it's, it's something that's said frequently or a sentiment by a character. You, the, the narration just says it. There's no need to add punctuation. Yeah, I think I do this in my writing too. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about it because SI doesn't really need things to be in real time. It doesn't have to be like, Alex said, quote this, Calissa said, quote that. It's just kind of like, I remember all the conversations that were meaningful to me in the past. I still remember exactly what you said, what I said. So it's just like kind of timeless and ever present. So I don't see any need to use quotation marks, which brings me to like, Madame Bovary, I think that was where I learned about like appropriate narration and unfortunately like Flaubert, we can't find eye movement footage of that him, <laughs> but I'm almost sure like even when people talk about him, how he spent like 10 years writing Madame Bovary to make sure that every word has a specific meaning, I feel like wow. that's, I'm sure <laughs> that's gonna be like SI any year, any SI yeah, out of yeah. Okay, so another one is Haruki Murakami, and unfortunately there's only like two interviews of him, and we'll show you the videos of that now, but there's a few moments where you can see the staccato movement when he looks away. Basically, it's like so similar to Atwood's first beginning. It's like he just explains this elevator that he's in for like about five <laughs> paragraphs. Or even that longer. would kill me! <laughs> Oh wait, that'll kill me. See, I don't know if like Dickens was S E and I or um or a teacher was saying like he was paid like per word. So he, but maybe he was a paid per word but also S E and I because he would like freaking talk about two pages about this like room that he's in with the furniture and varnished wood and maple. I'm like ah 
And so again, I think he's trying to convey the physicality of this elevator to some sort of like NI themes or vibes or whatever. So at first he kind of talks about how the elevator continues its impossibly slow ascent and that how he's like losing the sense of direction. So I think that's kind of like the NI meaning that maybe like the character itself is losing some sense of direction. So it's like this very physical kind of metaphor there. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. There was something else too. Oh yeah. And then he talks about how the elevator was like very confined and how he felt so confined and like like it was a coffin or something so again it's kind of like externalizing I think the character's experience into like these physical metaphors to convey this like an eye meeting first of all consider the space that's so an eye I can't even the elevator was so spacious it could have served as an office like all these put a desk add a cabinet and a locker this is all like stuff that I have to add and keep in my mind is a, a cabinet and a locker thrown in a kitchenette and you still have room to spare okay so it was big I mean <laughs> there's all this extreme of consciousness of him and his thoughts in the elevator but then I, I just want to compare it to the piano teacher where it's like in that first paragraph you just basically figured out Erica's entire relationship with her mom and right. father and you know how like she entered he exited it's like whoa like that sentence was so stark but it says so much but I think you might not like feel enough because it doesn't have enough detail for me yeah 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 I think that's yeah I feel like I, I lamented <laughs> once before about how much I struggled in English class and I wonder if it was just like mostly like S-I-N-E authors that we were It's probably doing. because our English teacher was S-I-N-E. Yeah. <laughs> and there was one author, there was James Joyce, and of course he too was like, you know, no videos of him to type him on, yeah. but I suspect he would be like S-E-N-I because um, we basically read a bunch of his short stories and that's pretty much what happened. It was like <clears throat> a sequence of events that happened and they just carried you through it in real time and then throughout the whole thing you're supposed to glean some sort of like one singular N-I meaning from all that. So that was like my one English class experience that I actually... <laughs> Like enjoy. I was like, oh, I get this author. Yes. Oh, uh, that was like the one where I was like, um. <laughs> well, because we usually like, I think his method or English teacher was like do deep analysis, like pick apart sentences. And, yeah, like, he was apart teaching words. like S I N E. Yeah, of which is unfortunate for the N I S E people. But yeah, I had no problem doing that, and I had like a field day with. Kafka and the Metamorphosis, which a lot of people say he's INFP, obviously we can't really type him, but I would guess he's at least on the SI axis, mm -hmm. whether in E is higher or not. It's so interesting, okay, when you said Kafka, I remembered the essay that I wrote on Kafka's Metamorphosis, and okay. it was about like gender roles and like comparing like the main guy's experience to like his sister's and mother's experience, mm. and it's like so like SE, <laughs> I, I could not like pick a part and be like, ooh, this word symbolizes this thing, and that word, I just had to like look at the overall plot and be like, okay. <laughs> oh, right, remember how I said that um, a lot of times, oh my gosh, this is so exciting, I said that a lot of times, like SI, we say our similes and metaphors, but without referring, re uh, referencing the original object that the metaphor came from, so I think that's like all of the metamorphosis, like Greg is not right. woke up as a vermin, and right. that, it just, he just is, like, what he feels like, and what he seems like, he just is, and that just seems so SI and he's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and now we'll put, like, the excerpts of our thingy, like, down. The first thing that struck me about Alex's writing, well, first I gleaned the whole meaning from this short story. I didn't get anything from like the specific sentences other than mm, visual yeah, images. Right, yeah. So it wasn't like meaning, 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 meaning. It was like, okay, mental image, mental image, mental image, things are happening. And then, oh, the general meaning is like mental illness or like overcoming your negative past or something. What struck me was that you use like syrupy darkness and ooze, which are super, they're super juicy words, they're super right. sense-rich <laughs> words, <laughs> and it just immediately like permeated my mind, and then it's also kind of surreal because you don't walk down a subway and see that happening right. to a girl, right? Whereas, um, like, just as a comparison, my story, like, the, the situation is super weird and surreal, you don't mm -hmm. see that every day, but it's very visceral, like, I think I describe their positions and anatomy and, like, who's moving where, um, so in that sense, it's not surreal at all, even though the whole situation is very bizarre. Right, and I think in yours, like, the situation was, like, a vehicle 
to describe the nature of their relationship. It's not like there was a situation and then this other situation and it was like through uh, the yeah. like sequence of events, something uh-huh. happens. It was like, okay, there's this scene that's happening, but then through it, you like use these SI associations to like describe like Melanie's and Blanche's like relationship. And yeah, like every sentence had like, you know, very distinct meaning. You kind of go through it. It's like meaning, 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 new information, new information. Mine, it's like you read the whole thing and it's like, okay, there's just like one piece of information. (laughs) Oh my gosh. What was your experience for writing it? Do you kind of remember? And if it's like somehow representative of... Oh yeah, actually, actually kind of. I was like, okay, there's all these tensions between like your ideal like self-image or ego Mm -hmm. and your actual self and sexuality is one way to manifest it, right? So like, let me just use that as a first scene. And I I definitely made a point to do all these surreal things. Like she realized, like Melanie realized if she could just focus, then she could move their arm and it's like their arm, singular. Mm. It's it's a bit weird. Um, yeah, so I definitely added all these like weird surreal linguistic play into it. And someone said, oh, this imagery is so interesting. Should definitely be a movie. I was like, actually, this should definitely not be a movie because it would be way too literal. Like, if it's actually a conjoined twin, having conjoined twin issues, that's just, like, people would just think, you know, it's about discrimination and disabilities, but it's, it's right. not. It's just, like, a really surreal, weird way to convey this, like, one SI meaning that I had in my mind. Oh, it's so similar to the Kafka thing of, like, he wakes up and he is, is a bug. <laughs> I wake up and I am, like, like, I have, she has this, like, perfect twin on her shoulder that's always, like, saying disparaging things to her, like, because that's what we say to ourselves, um, yeah, oh, that is so similar to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe he is behind of me. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I think I had that overall, like, an eye thing in my head at the beginning, and then I just had to fill in the SE description, and it took me, like, a really long time just to, like, get out those three paragraphs from, from my brain. So I think I... Oh, another thing I noticed was, like, holy cow, dense. Like, it's so dense. Like, the whole thing was um about the mental illness. But see, like, I, I feel like if I were writing that, somehow, even though I would probably use less adjectives, it would be a lot, like, it would be oh, yeah, a yeah. lot of more specific things that the person is doing. Like, I feel like if you were writing my thing, it would be like... It's conjoined to it how he sucks me. <laughs> and then she worries that she might be pregnant. The thoughts race through her head. Oh yeah, no, yeah. what to do? Um, yeah, so you, like, what happened was she was just sitting on the subway and she had a memory to her childhood, right? right? But, but, like, that kind of, it, <laughs> I read the memory sentence her playing as a child, mm. and I'm like, that's it. <laughs> I got the memory. That was like the most crystallized, crystalline memory ever. Like I got no information from. Right. I mean, I got the general idea, but it yeah. was just so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Condensed. And the reason oh. why the first sentence is just like, or the first paragraph is one sentence, is because I wanted to flesh that out into a paragraph, oh. but I just couldn't. I like, <laughs> I was just gonna come back to it, but I guess I never did. Yeah, and it's interesting. I think it's just like as you're probably in the process of writing, just like always find new associations. That's why you're so prolific. <laughs> you know, you could just be like, oh, another association, another thing, and then it's just like sentence after sentence, right? Yeah. But mine all comes down to one, and it's like, oh my gosh, how do I like? Oh right, right. Little for little like little. the sharing a body thing with like the negative parts of your mind by the twin thing. I was thinking, you know, the parts of your body have different meanings, right? Like. I think the vagina wow. has one meaning. Well, yeah, that's why that's why I go through them. It's not oh. like, oh my gosh, we share a body. <laughs> like, the different part, the, go from the vagina to the heart. The heart has another uh, symbolic right. meaning because you have to choose who you love. To the belly, if you get pregnant, who's is it? You know, oh, like man. that was totally lost. <laughs> I feel bad. It's really uh, good. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, that was a really fun topic. Yeah. So let us know if you are S I N E S E N I. And um, if you kind of relate, maybe, do you think your favorite authors also, like, fall into the same perception axis that you are based on, like, these differences? And are there any other authors that you think also, like, clearly fall into one of these categories? That'd be really cool. Yeah, really good to hear. And, yeah, if you want to make a request for a video or if you just want to support this channel and or continue this content, you can check out our Patreon. And we also now have typing services, which we do on objective criteria. So if you want to be typed, you can check out cognitive8.com. We'll link that in the description. And thanks so much. See you next time. (laughs) Bye. Bye.